and people with huge amounts of money and influence that were trying to throw up smoke screens. And I don't even know the extent to which, I mean, I don't know these people, and even if I did, I don't know if I could penetrate like through their incredible showmanship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I can't tell to the extent to which they actually believe this stuff because they're living in this non-linear, like unbelievably powerful situation. I think sometimes when I read about people actually believing the simulation hypothesis, that this is like the divine right of kings, you know, that, that people, people thought when you, when you have so much power that, that you're so far off the narrative that you start believing bizarre supernatural things, right? <laughs> but the, um, so I don't know if they actually believe it. I suspect that there's an awful lot of um, going around trying to make sure that, uh, that uh, you're not responsible or try to, to the maximum extent possible to evade regulation. And what I try to communicate when I talk to people from the tech industry is that um, you don't want to evade regulation. I mean, most regulation in, in biological terms is up regulation. Mostly the governments are doing massive investment to make sure these companies do well. But the reason we have government is to make sure that you know, society is stable, that people who create goods get rewarded for those creations. At least they have a more likelihood of getting rewarded than the people who try to steal them. Yeah. You know? So that's what government is for. And it's in all of our interests to make sure that you know, that governments have enough uh, power that they can help us keep a coherent and fair society, and also that there's enough redistribution out to everybody else, all the people that, that are living and, and working with us in our society so that they don't have to turn to crime, and so that they don't feel like, you know, angry and, and start doing violent things, and so that they can actually spend money on stuff, right? Uh, I, I, I've started realizing that, you know, we, I think we're overly obsessed with money and, and part of that comes from um, thinking about what's really going on with these free services. So, you know, Facebook is free and Google is free. What does that really mean? I don't think it's free at all. I think, and I don't think that they're selling us. That's the, that was the easy answer. It was cute. But I think it's bartering. I think that we're bartering data. So we're willing to get, we don't even know what data we're giving up, to be honest, but, but even if we were signing up and saying, yes, you can have this and that and the other, we're getting more aware of what data we're giving. Um, we're willing to give that in, in exchange for, oh, now I know how long it takes to get from here to London and I can stay here the exact right amount of time because basically Google Maps is going to give me that, you know, or, or that... Um, the, the relationship I'm able to maintain with my family with minimal investment because we're all on Facebook together. You know, mm -hmm. those kinds of things are things that we're doing this bartering. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that at the time of the barter, so first of all, it's non-denominated. We call it free. And uh, so nobody taxes it because there's no income. But secondly, at the time of the barter, those guys are basically speculating. They have no idea what the state is worth. But then 10 years later, they suddenly think, oh my goodness, look, we can figure out, you know, how to manipulate voters or something, right? And, and then you're like, now I see what the value of this data is. So I don't think we can do things based on um, taxing at income anymore. I think we have to look at things like taxing at uh, wealth, at, like the increase in market cap. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have to figure out how to fairly des you know, distribute that taxation, but who's going to do that? Who's the enforcer? If you, know, you have like you know this company that's like one of the the biggest market cap companies in the entire world, and it claims that it's living in the Canary Islands, you know, or something. <laughs> so there has yeah. to be enforcement, and that's I think what the European Union is very good for, because if you want access to the world's largest economy, which is the eurozone, let alone you know Britain and and well for a while Britain at least, and various other uh, non-euro economies, then you have to meet their rules. And so I think they can be uh, instrumental. And there's a lot of other people who see the utility of this, like Japan, um, Africa. You know? mm -hmm. There's a lot of other countries who see the utility of saying, let's figure out a better way to um, handle these problems and, and to distribute the wealth that's being created. So mm -hmm. not entirely. Of course you want the people who made the wealth to get, have reward for doing that because you want them to keep doing their good job but you need at least enough to go into the infrastructure so that, as I said, we can have a stable world, you know, so that we don't have people rioting and we don't, and we don't, and, and so that, I mean, the tech is such a natural uh, ally for, for any kind of humanist perspective because they need those, 
those one in a billion peop you know, people that are amazing programmers. They need to find those people. They need them to be well nourished and well educated and be able to move across the border. Mm -hmm. So they're our natural allies for all of us who have sort of a liberal humanist perspective on that, that individual lives matter and it doesn't matter where you're born, you still matter, right? Uh -huh. 